Hello everyone, my name is Cliff and welcome back to my channel. This is Cliff's Dark Gems. Today I'm going to be doing the Creatures of the Night book tag, where I'm going to be giving you loads of awesome horror Halloween recommendations. Stay tuned. Okay everyone, so this tag was actually created uh, eight years ago uh, by Katie Tastic and it's a simple thing of selecting a favorite book featuring the creatures listed below. Um, so what I'm going to do in some instances, I'm not going to just select one book, I'm going to select two because in some cases the two books are very different and yeah, this is just a recommendations video for all of you. I'm not going to be doing a review on every, every book, I'm not going to be rambling on for about two, three, four minutes a book. I'm just going to be shooting them out quite quickly and let me, I'm letting you know why I think you should read them. Okay, first of all we have The Vampire and now I'm going to basically show you a book that is very, very original, not your typical vampire and that is Carry and Comfort by Dan Simmons. Now this is more like mind controlling psychic vampires. Um, an absolutely terrible group uh, this is very fast-paced, uh, very horrific, and at the beginning of the novel, it's quite thick as you can see, at the beginning of the novel is some of the most horrible stuff that I've ever read. It takes place in a, a German uh, concentration camp, um, and yeah, it's nightmare fuel. Uh, but this is an excellent novel, uh, it's got a wide array of characters, yeah, and that's all I'm going to say about this one, but pick it up, carry in comfort. Okay, another vampire novel that is very, very different, um, very unusual. I read it a long time ago as a kid. It is Sunshine by Robert McKinley. Now, I know this book is labeled as YA, and in some cases people even talk about it as romance. I can't remember any of that. It's pretty dark. And it's about a woman that gets captured by these vampires, and she forms a bond. Um, not your traditional, like, uh, kind of love bond. She forms a bond with this one vampire that is supposed to be like a, holding her captive. And it's a very powerful piece. It's quite delayed and it's very interesting. And as I said, it does get very dark. Now this, these vampires are not sparkly, um, they're but ugly. And it's a very interesting story and I would highly recommend it. Um, if you want something maybe a little bit lighter, uh, maybe something just a little bit different. So that is Sunshine by Robert McKinney. Okay, second up we have Werewolves. Uh, now this is a book, S.P. Somtar, Moondance. Now, when I read it, I don't know how highly I reviewed it. Um, it's actually probably worth a reread. Re it's about a pack of werewolves from Europe who basically emigrate to America and they basically go because they've been persecuted, they're looking for more land, fresh food, and where they end up in America, there is, I'm not sure if it's another pack, but there are American Indians. Yeah, and this is all kinds of crazy. I know that in one part of the novel is just this huge werewolf battle, as far as I remember. Might be wrong. But yeah, give it a chance. That is Moondance by S.B. Somtau. And I love the cover. Okay, and the third prompt is zombies. Now, I've got a typical zombie novel um, with just blood and guts and zombies eating people and craziness. And then I've got a atypical zombie, zombie novel to share with you. Typical zombie novel is Wet Work by Philip Nutnam. Now, I mentioned this book right at the beginning of the year when I was very new on this channel amongst the sort of underappreciated horror. Now, this author was called by Clive Barker, a vital and original talent. Unfortunately, he died. This is the only novel he ever wrote. Um, and it is batshit crazy. Um, there's basically cars and shooting. And I think zombies can actually shoot guns. And it just becomes an absolute bloodbath. Um, it's a lot of fun though. And that is wet work. The other one that is atypical, I also spoke about briefly towards the beginning of the year. 
We can give it the highest marks, but it's got a lot of positive reviews on Goodreads. Handling the Undead. Now this is by the same uh, person that wrote Let the Right One In, which is one of my favourite novels. And it's by yeah, John Lindquist. It's a very interesting story. Um, very unlike any zombie story you're going to hear about. It is basically the dead just start rising um, from their graves. They're not causing harm for anyone. They're just shuffling around like mindless corpses. And yet they're drawn to their loved ones. Um, and the whole book is about how the government and how people actually try to control this. And also the fact that later on something very strange starts happening with these zombies. Um, and they seem to have some kind of a psychic ability and weird ability. Um, yes, yeah, so it's a very weird novel. I wasn't crazy about it. I think I gave it three stars, maybe three and a half rounded down. But yeah, it's worth a check um, if you enjoy that kind of thing. It's very creepy and very unsettling. Um, that is handling the undead. Okay, next up we've got uh, Ghosts. Now this is one of my favourite YA books, one of my favourite authors, and that's Neil Gaiman. Uh, and this is a graveyard book. Now if you haven't read this, do yourselves a, a favour. It is an absolute treat. It's about a boy that basically his parents get brutally murdered and he ends up uh, in a graveyard being taken care of, being raised by ghosts and by a vampire. Um, and it's, it's creepy, it's delicious, it's dark. Um, there are some scenes that are yeah, really awesome both for adults and I suppose young adults. But it's a stunning read. In fact you can't go wrong with Neil Gaiman in the spooky season. He's just a fantastic author. That is the graveyard book. Okay, time for another sort of ghost haunting story, but a lot darker. We have got 1922 taken from Stephen King's Full Dark No Stars. Now this novella, probably one of the best he's ever written, it is absolutely terrifying. Um, when a, a father and a son sort of collaborate to murder the mother, who is not a very nice person at all, but does she deserve to be murdered? I'm not sure about that. But anyway, uh, once they throw it down a well, um, yeah, it's kind of like a haunting story. Sort of a ghost story with lots and lots of rats. That's all I'm going to say about that. But if, do yourselves a favour. If you haven't read this compilation, Full Dark No Stars, I would say it's one of his best. Fantastic stories all around. Okay, the fifth prompt is Witch, Warlock, Spellcaster. And I've gone with Shadowland by Peter Straub. Now this is where two boys, I think they have school holidays or something, so they're spending the time. Um, I think it's with one of the boys' uncle, and basically in this dark woods. And so they become apprenticed to this guy, and he is a, a master magician. This is very dark, very creepy. You might not call it horror, um, although it is some terrifying moments at the end of this book. But it is most definitely dark fantasy. Um, with very, very good horror elements as well. Uh, so yeah, if you want to read a good uh, warlock wizard story, that is Shadowland by Peter Straub. Okay, number five is six is an interesting one. It's fairy, sort of fae folk. And there's one thing that comes to mind straight away, and that is John Connolly, The Book of Lost Things. Now, this is another book that I've spoken to, spoken about earlier on my channel. And it's a fantastic story, but very, very dark. It's called YA. I don't think there are sections of this book appropriate for younger readers at all. And it's basically about this boy who loses his mother. And he basically gets caught up in this adventure in this sort of other world, in this sort of dark wood. Where fairy tales are almost turned on their head. Um, very bloody, very dark, very vicious. And uh, yeah. It's, it's a fantastic sort of fairy tale retelling, twisted, uh, imaginative piece of uh, writing. And I would really strong, strongly recommend it to anyone who loves horror. And it's a book of lost things. I'm actually reading another one of his this month. I think it's uh, Every Dead Thing. But yeah, this is one of my favorite books. Give it a go. And I just want to mention another John Connolly book, which is actually a collection of short stories which in my opinion has a little bit of everything which is perfect for Halloween. Um, in fact, yeah, along with Neil Gaiman, he writes such creepy stuff. 
This is called Nocturnes. I can get ha get hold of this collection. Yeah, it's well worth having a look. Uh, it's got a bit of everything, which is sort of magic, everything. That is Nocturnes. Okay, seventh prompt is Demons. Now, there are two books here again. Uh, the first one, I gave a full review earlier on in my channel, so I'm going to just mention very briefly, and that is Toadie by Mark Morris. Now, this has got serious it vibes going for it. Um, it's this group of boys. They have a seance in an old house, and they summon an evil. Not so sure it's your typical demon story, but it is freaking brilliant. I absolutely love this. This was full on five stars. And yeah, you'll you'll see the notices about it and so on. But it, <laughs> towards the end of the novel, it's a big chunky thing, but it gets very, very awesome. Uh, the world building is fantastic. And yeah, the characterization, world building, everything is just a wonderful, wonderful horror novel. That is totally. Okay, another one on demons. Now, even though this is a solid novel, but it's probably my least favorite of Joe Hill's books uh, that I've read. My favourite being Nosferatu, but that's more of a Christmas read. Uh, this is Horns by Joe Hill. Now, this is an interesting one because although I enjoy it, it just didn't have the pacing and the excitement as others that I've read by him. Um, it's about this man who's really tormented. He has lost his girlfriend, was murdered. He was a suspect, but he kind of got let off, I think. But he was kind of framed. And he, one morning he grows horns on the top of his head um, and he develops these mysterious powers which is something to do with reading the minds of other people around him it's sort of I think if I remember correctly it's like they tell him that like mentally um, their sins or their and anyway he uses his power to try and track down what happened to his girlfriend um, and it's a movie with it as well I didn't particularly enjoy it I think it had that Hobbit guy I can't remember what his name was uh, Elijah Wood but yeah it is a, it's a fun book uh, but for me it's not quite the same as his other novels that is Horns still recommend it though okay and the eighth book is uh, well, the eighth prompt is Angel this is a difficult one um, now I had one novel that I thought of that was all out horror like full on but if I even mentioned the name of the novel and talked about the novel and put angels with it, it would spoil the whole novel for you, in a way. Even though they just make an appearance towards the end, so I'm not going to go there. Other thing I was thinking of is another Neil Gaiman, um, Neverwhere. Now, I know that I had a copy somewhere. I think before this video, I spent about 20 minutes looking for this damn copy. Couldn't find it, so it's going to be up there. Uh, but this is a favourite novel of mine. Um, not, not in my top 10 or 20, but it is right up there. Um, and it's more dark fantasy. It's very creepy. And there's some dark humor in there as well. And it's about this man in London. And he does a favor for this young girl called Dor. Who's having problems with his girlfriend. And he ends up basically finding this world below London. Um, where people have fallen between the cracks. And this world is full of all sorts of strange creatures, monsters, weird folk, and an angel as well. Um, so yeah, it's a very a very imaginative tale, but very, very weird. Um, I know there was a mini-series or a British series that was made about it as well. I didn't particularly enjoy it. I think I watched a couple of, I didn't think it was very well acted. But the book itself is wonderful. Um, so do yourselves a favour, pick up Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. Okay, the ninth prompt is Alien, um, and now I just had to pick up this. I did talk about it earlier in the year as well, but that is Alan Dean Foster, To the Vanishing Point. Now, this is a mad sort of road trip book, um, but a family moving to Vegas, and they're going in their camper van, and they pick up a hitchhiker, and it's a weird blend of like fantasy, science fiction, horror. It's just a crazy, crazy ride. Um, I would have, I think I said earlier that I would have preferred more horror, but they certainly do go to kind of a hellish place, and then they go all over the place, uh, really, yeah, it does get very science fiction-y, don't even know if that's a word, but I really enjoyed it, and I'll definitely be reading more of him, and that is To the Vanishing Point. 
Okay, and we're going to finish off with a uh, super-powered human. And what I've got here is a book by Stephen King. I was thinking of Carrie, but I thought I've spoken about that, better, that, that already. So I'm going with Firestarter. It's about a young girl, I think her name is Charlie McGee. And she has a special power. She can start fires. And as a result, she's on the run because the government wants to capture, capture her and to use her power for, well, I suppose, no good. I think it's some kind of secret, secret government thing. And yeah, so it's a fun story. It's not my favorite Stephen King. In fact, I think I only gave it three stars, but maybe I should try it again someday. Because um, it, it is a lot of fun. Um, sometimes it reads more like a kind of action chase movie than a horror movie. Sorry, book. Um, but yeah, that is Firestarter by Stephen King. Okay, everyone, so that's uh, Creatures of the Night tag. Uh, it's just a wonderful way just to give a whole lot of book recommendations for the spooky season. And I'd like to tag a few people. I'd like to tag Bad is Rad. I'd like to tag Ed Lewis Reviews, uh, NJ at Reading His Life, and Dark Violet Dreams. And of course, anyone else that wants to do this tag, consider yourself tagged. Uh, and I'll link all their awesome channels below, as well as the person who created this tag. But yeah, until next time, take care of yourselves. Uh, please leave a comment in the section below about those books. Tell me what you think. And yeah, next time, take care of yourselves. Uh, keep those pages turning, and cheers.